You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Almost Human After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Almost Human After Show. Hey there, Almost Human fans. Oh, yeah. Yo. <laughs> I love Ryan's, like, Z Morning Zoo face. Look at hey. that. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. It's, hey, gang. I'm a bobblehead. It's, it's After Buzz TV. It's the Almost Human podcast. You know that's why you know that <laughs> you know it that's is. why you're here. That's why you're here. You like it at this point. Or we're you're old. very lost. I know. Because <laughs> we're 11 episodes in. This is season one, episode 11. Uh, we're talking about Disrupt. I'm Matt Lieberman. we got the whole panel here. Uh, unfortunately, Megan Salinas, though. Megan Salinas uh, is uh, is absent this week. We miss her, but we have a fantastic fill-in in in the form of Yell Teagle. Hello, everyone. The amazing Yell Teagle's here. Uh, Ryan Hooks is here. Yo, bobbing heads at the left and the right. Yeah, Zach Wilson's here. (laughs) Hey guys, thanks for joining us. You have a wonderful new chapeau. I like I I like the hat. It's very nice. The old chapeau. The old chapeau. Uh, So finally, we only have three episodes left of this season. They're all going to be the actual episodes that they're supposed to be well two now yeah now there's two more uh and we got some interesting new questions this week we got to tap into some excellent big philosophical questions about the future and technology uh, i'm really really excited to talk to you guys about it what did you think um i loved this episode i thought it was really interesting and it was very cool to see this like killer thing and you don't know if it's the technology or if it's the people and it was just really great to see that it's not just you know like it has been hey robots hey everyone's dying (laughs) so i want to talk about something totally unrelated to what you're talking about matt because (laughs) why would i follow what you're doing because i'm running the show no no reason so um since as we've been talking about the last couple weeks (laughs) the the numbers are are not so great for the uh, almost human world and they have put out a almost human through the twitter feed uh, an e-online voting poll about yeah. saving the show. So I just wanted to let everyone know about that. So go to Almost Human TF and or also on my Twitter feed. I've tweeted it out. Vote we'll, for the we'll show. All, we'll all tweet out. Yeah, the yeah. Link. yeah. We, yeah. We just want to make sure that we can try to save the show as much as we can. Yeah. Um, this also, episode. Yeah. Are we, are we, can we go? Well, back? no. It's just as long as we're going to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, we'll get back to your thoughts about the episode later. Okay. Who cares because about his thoughts about the episode? Even though this should normally go in news and gossip, Ryan. I wanted to get it out immediately. <sighs> This is why this is why we can't let you outside. Listen, um, <laughs> I'm in this, this small cage this, anyway. This one, this one poll is only part of a larger problem. If we want to help save Almost Human and ensure a season two renewal, you have to you have to tweet at Fox Broadcasting Corporation. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to any poll that you find, send it to us. We'll tweet it out. We'll tell people about it on the show. Tell your friends to watch it. Tell them to watch it the night that it airs. If you have it on your DVR, watch it within the first three days. It's so crucial. If you can watch yeah. it the same day, so crucial. It really means the world. You know, tweet at them. Let them know that you that you love the show. Or even tweet them articles where pundits are talking about how great the show is or that it deserves hint, hint. a renewal. Tweet them our podcast. Yeah. Maybe. You can maybe tweet them our <laughs> podcast. Maybe. I mean, I do. All right. Back this to, one, back to the episode. actual episode. Yeah, back to the actual episode. We're going to skip Ryan because... Because I don't, uh, he forfeited his ability to talk what about I, the episode. Next time. What I loved about this episode, yes, what I really loved is that this did this did, did exactly what I love about science fiction. And yes. what I look for in good science fiction is it took an, an issue that we're dealing with right now in the real world, which in in this case is the John Zimmer trial. Mm-hmm. It's did I, I didn't use the right name, did I? George. No. George, George, Zimmerman. George, Zimmerman. George Zimmerman. John Zimmer. Zimmer is a totally different person. Yeah, John Zimmer is the CEO <laughs> of Lyft. Lyft. Yeah. yeah. The, we like the him. The Zimmerman trial. The Zimmerman trial, yeah. regardless. Um, the Zimmerman trial, putting it into the future, into a futuristic technology place where it it's really hits home for us. Like, this is a realistic situation, something that we can understand, we can evaluate. Disrupt being a very, very clearly anonymous. What would have Anonymous could take their revenge on George Zimmerman? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what this episode was in a nutshell. Yeah, it was taking a lot of current issues and, and, and uh, 
you know, things that we've seen in the news, things that do exist that are still prevalent uh, and kind of blends them up into a nice futuristic cocktail. Um, we're going to talk about so sort of the larger implications of uh, information privacy and security and, you know, how secure are we? We're relying even more upon technology, which, um, you know, frankly, how, how much can we really know is on our side. But I want to jump in and talk character stuff first. So we open on Rudy kind of, he's not experimenting on Dorian, but he kind of is while he's asleep. <laughs> he's like going through and at first I thought, is Rudy scrubbing Dorian's hard drive and like getting rid of files and memories and things like that? Uh, he tells he tells uh, he tells Dorian and he tells Kenix later that he was just looking through, he was defragging and whatever, but searching and he found these odd memory files, which appear to be from a child's perspective. Now, what do you guys think? I'm sure there are a lot of theories out there. I I know I immediately was like. Oh, all the DRNs were based on a human. It's, they were mapped on a human <laughs> brain. This is what's happening. But at the same time, I don't know. What did, what did you guys think? I had a very similar feeling, and I thought that it was going to be something like the the soul of a child was stolen and yeah. was put into that's what synthetic stole is. <laughs> it's some, like, ch child that died of cancer, and they, like, saved the essence of, of innocence. That's hmm. what I believe. Yeah, I didn't think that. <laughs> I, I, I actually went, thought oh, something very similar to I that. Went so, I went somewhere totally different with it, apparently. Where did then. you go? So I, Probably to a strip club. Well, so <laughs> After the show, of course. I watched it the first night to get the ratings. Sure. <laughs> so anyway, back to what I was saying about the show, not the Dorian. Um, I thought that uh, this was a setup for the episode because the way they made it seem last week was like they were getting hacked and I thought this was going to be somewhere that this was starting the hacking process. Yeah. And like that it was happening right away and that maybe part of this episode would be more revolved in the hacking of Dorian's mind and the DRNs. Well, giving us a sample of the hacker culture uh, allows us to then revisit it and apply it to Dorian. I think that it opens a nice door in that way that we see the hacker culture is prevalent, that even teenagers uh, can be geniuses at it, and that, you know, they're kind of borderline personalities who could take out their frustrations and we've on already technology. even seen that. Because yeah. a couple weeks ago when they hacked the, the printer that made those drugs, those designer drugs. Yeah, the chem printer. Yeah, so yeah. it's there. Yeah, you know, we're seeing that the youth, much like today, the youth are just more... In like a bit, they have a stronger ability to learn this new technology. It just it's familiar to them. It's what they grew up on. So they just jump in and they're like, "Oh, CSS three point nine. I'm just gonna hack that. I don't know. Make it the the number I made up, but yeah, you did. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> CSS three point nine is is definitely futuristic. Uh, what what you're gonna say something? No, no. I was just laughing at. Okay. That was the equation well, answer. I, but to guys, the... we're talking about Dorian and Rudy here. It's not just not just the technological um, perspective, but what is this? What are these memories doing to him psychologically? I, I I was really kind of bothered to see Rudy sort of taking advantage of him while he slept. It's pretty perverse, you know. We we think about. Dorian as a human, or at least as a person, most of the time as the viewer. But he still is a machine at the yeah. end of the day. I so know, but he considers cool himself to be a person. He has feelings. It's really messed up to wake up in a strange place and your roommate and friend has stuck something in the back of your neck and is screwing with your brain. Have That's you ever, insanity. Have you ever been to a frat house before? I was going to ask the same question. I don't. I <laughs> to wake up somewhere don't. else totally different and have stuff all over you? That's fine when you're 18, <laughs> not when you're in your mid-40s. Well, Dorian's like two. Yeah, he's really yeah. only so. two. He's two. He shouldn't be in a frat house. <laughs> <laughs> it does, though. It poses uh, interesting questions about like privacy and like where is the line drawn? Because in big picture, yeah, he is a machine and he's created for a purpose. But yet he's really, really upset the whole time about them and this issue where he feels invaded it's a massive ethical quandary if yeah. you will of like when do you when do you consider artificial intelligence to be equivalent to human intelligence it is something Never. that we built yeah when, and it's something that the police department owns yeah they he, own him he, he is, is property. owned but like but i disagree i think that at this point like he has feelings emotions he decides himself it's he might as well be human yeah like it, other than <laughs> Sorry. Hate you. I hate you. I, I, 
so much hate. God, I want to meet. I wish I had. Continue, I Zach. You. Continue. With um, <laughs> but obviously, I see Dorian as fully human. I think that's what the show wants us to think, especially. Hmm. And it's the kind of thing where eventually, when artificial intelligence reaches this sort of this level, governments start to having to get involved in wondering. And I think eventually, if this show gets to keep going, we'll get to see that become more of an issue of where Dorian just doesn't want to just live somewhere else, be charged at Rudy's place. He wants rights that he doesn't get. Yes. And part of it with the waking up to Rudy scrubbing him is like, yes, Rudy was doing routine maintenance, but he was also, Dorian is liable for hacking. Yeah. As we now know. I don't know where this stuff come, came from. I want to imagine that it was um, John Larquette's character. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the doctor's name. Uh, it's okay. It was a few weeks ago. Yeah. But I imagine that this is the lead up to him coming back and unleashing his Dorian army mm -hmm. upon the world. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're all excited for that. <laughs> um, and I could make so many Dorian Dong jokes right now. I was about to say the women are I'm ex side most excited. <laughs> I'm sidestepping. We're going to do more of that later. You mean the side jump, really. What? You can't just step out of the way. You have to jump out of the way. That's true. You can't even jump out of the way. Honestly, you have to hack your way through like a goddamn forest. <laughs> yeah, roll. Except it's just one tree and it's sideways. And let's be honest, no one's going to be sidestepping or side jumping. No, everyone's going to stop and they're going to take a ride and they're going to enjoy themselves and really come to understand that Dorian deserves real rights. Yes. Oh, he does. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Um, except in the bedroom. Okay. So, um,. I I'm still very very curious about these about these memories and what they're doing to Dorian. You know, like we saw the preview for next week, and it doesn't seem like John Larroquette's not coming back. They kind of focused on the the relationship between Kennex and Dorian. We didn't get any info. Not yet, anyway. Right. I mean, they're they're planting a seed. Well, they might revisit it a little little bit next week, and mm -hmm. then actually explore it right. in the finale. Well, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that we're just gonna get we're gonna get more like next week, and then end it with like a big, uh, a big reveal that'll bring us into the finale. Mm -hmm. You are so um, optimistic. So optimistic. I feel like if John Larroquette's not coming back, unless the show gets picked up, that's my theory. Aww. Oh, lame. I'm such a so pessimist. I think since we're talking about the show and the concept, to me, as I've been watching these episodes of the show, one of the, like the problems that sticks out in my mind is like there's no like template for this world that they live in. Everything sort of seems like made up as they go. Hmm. Like they're like, oh, well, let's do this. Or, and like they keep adding in different factions, but then never revisiting old factions. Are you talking about, are you talking about disrupt in terms Which of- Which is everything. I mean, so in the show, like there's no like set world and rules for the world that they're in because like, oh, it's the future. So we can just kind of do these extra things where we can add these storylines in and they're not really revisiting the ones they've already introduced. In it's terms almost of like, the technology? It's almost, yeah, just technology or like the story. That it's like the things that they have created, they use them once because it fits the purpose of an episode, but then they don't bring it back again. There's no like world, there's not, you know, a I don't, I don't, of the world. I don't know that I agree with that. I, I, see, I, what you're, I see what you're saying. I, I also disagree. I think that well, it's based in, it's based in the premise of the show is that like technology is evolving so fast, it's always something new, and that the police have no idea. How, they have to just handle it as it comes up, as stuff happens. And, the, and the, even the security council is like, we are changed. We went from we're going from holograms to actual androids because it's more secure. It's all changing. Um, but what we get from that is a really just scary experience of like you don't know what's coming next week. You have no idea, neither do, do the police. Yeah, I, and just in terms of in terms of how the show has been planned, I mean, things like the wall we saw as far back as the pilot. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like there there were a lot of decisions made in the in the construction of the show and the conception of the show that have permeated throughout the first season. I think airing it out of order may have made it feel a bit that way. That the progression in how what types of technology and types of groups that we were introduced to weren't introduced in the most uh, in the in the finest way where you know the next one is bigger than the last but I think also when you're building out a world with the possibilities that this one's ha this one has you know you want to get a little bit of everything in there and 
you're you're gonna kind of go out in all these different directions instead of heading in one straight line and maybe that's kind of what you're speaking i think so yeah i I do know what you're what you're searching for though because at first like especially the early parts of the series i was writing down like all these technologies that they were coming up with as if they were pieces of a puzzle Hmm. and i think that they are a little a couple of them are yeah i was just hoping they brought back more yeah the palladium came back or the um the metal, the precious metal that they yeah, were stealing pal- at the palladium. beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was palladium. Okay. Yeah. Um, they bring it back, and it becomes very important. And I think maybe we'll see a little bit more of that as we mm-hmm. get revealed towards the end of well, the season. Well, I mean, I really enjoyed our, our the character of Nico. I thought that he was an interesting foil for our existing characters. And I'm like, if I was running this show, season two or season three, I'd bring that guy back. Oh, yeah. Nico was super fascinating. And the whole... Uh, hacker culture Mm -hmm. was really exciting to see because they're at this party but they're really (laughs) just all hanging out and I was like that's what Northern California looks like Okay. Silicon Valley. Um, but I, I know you're. I loved Nico. Yeah. Uh, he was great. I actually expected towards the end of the episode for them to be like, "How would you like a job?" Kid? Yeah, give him a job. <laughs> yeah, come on, kid. <laughs> Join the me, force. Reminds me of like a young Christian Slater, like <laughs> late late eighties, early nineties Christian Slater, with, like mm-hmm. the hair. Yeah. <laughs> he was having a good time. Like he like clearly was like, I can save people with my hacking skills. I'm like, put him to work for the, the right. Him, him and Rudy are gonna hang out. Yeah, but he's oh, a hack God, for hire. That. Yeah. He's if they're not. He's a mercenary. He's a merc. He's a merc entail he realizes he can do more good working with the police. I don't think he's going to become a fir- yeah. permanent fixture. No. Um, okay. I'd like we're, to see him come back, though. It would be yeah. cool to see him come back. Uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about a lot of stuff. We still have way more stuff to cover. I'm going to get the iTunes stuff out of the way now so we can just go in unhampered. So, folks, you've heard me say it before. How many episodes of this podcast have you listened to? Um, I mean, you may be new. Maybe Roya, our engineer, says she hasn't listened to a single one, but that's okay. <laughs> this is our first I, one. I this imagine, is my first one, too. Yeah. That's right. I don't either. I imagine you're still going to give us a very fine iTunes review. Five stars. All right. Thank you. Uh, you know, come, you listen to the show, you can stream it on all the devices, you can watch it on all the devices, but what's the most important thing in life? Family. And I feel like you've become kind of our podcast family, and maybe you've led us into yours. <laughs> Maybe you listen to this podcast as a family and your kids are like, Mom, Dad, what are they talking about? And you say, you don't need to know that word because we talk about dongs all the time. <laughs> I really hope that that's not the situation. But if it is, you can tell us about it on iTunes. <laughs> the fact is, we need your support as much as you need our opinions and theories about this wonderful show. Uh, maybe more. Maybe n- I don't think so. I think it's just about the same. Uh, but maybe if you want to do a photo finish and you're just kind of edging them, maybe. Okay. Maybe, just maybe. But uh, the fact is, we, we do this show because we love Almost Human, and it's a free podcast. Anyone can download it, but how do they know which are the best shows to download? The only way to do it is with customer feedback, consumer feedback. And, you know, if you guys are enjoying the show as much as we enjoy doing the show, go to iTunes, slap us with a rating, give us a review. It only takes a second, and it really means the world because more people are going to get exposed to this podcast. We can build up more of a following. And also, we can show the Fox people, hey, gang, there's this podcast that gets this crazy amount of viewership, and they're all really engaged. Why? Because you make an incredible show. Don't cancel it. I know for a fact that Fox Publicity is aware of us. Oh, that's great. But they were already wrapped when they became aware of us, so mm-hmm. they couldn't send anybody to oh, hang out. Well, that's a but, but if you make Almost Human come back next year, we have uh, we are going to have an open discussion with them about having guests on the show. Wonderful. I want some Michael Ely up in this piece. Can he fit in this room? Yeah, this is a very small room. It's a character, guys. <laughs> that's right? the character. Michael yeah. Ely's penis is probably of a very nice size. But he's not an android. No, much the way that Dr. House learned to play the guitar and the piano because Hugh Laurie did, they based that purely on the actor. (laughs) Guys, I am volunteering to find out for us. Okay. (laughs) It's it's a win. And iTunes. It's a win for everyone. Five stars. Thanks for tuning in. All right, so uh, just reading out some shout-outs real quick. People reviewed the show in the past week. Uh, Mad Moni. What's up, Mad Moni? Almost human. Great re- It just says great review. A great review of a great review. <laughs> Five stars. High energy and fun. Mad Town Lost. Excellent content. Great rapport amongst the participants. Makes me feel like I'm there, too. That's what we want. Yeah. Uh, well, you're th- welcome to call in. Yeah. Uh, this show is great. Danette Stone King. That's an awesome name. Uh, I love this show. It is awesome. I also, the podcast. <laughs> I hope it does get a second season. I agree with all of these statements. 
Dorian sized fun from Lonnie Box. Another great name. <laughs> uh, please be a season two. I agree. Okay. So, um, folks, we got to talk about the, the smart house and this murder, which is like one of the most gruesome deaths we've had on this show. Like, by far, this double murder by house. What is the weapon? A house. They used a house to kill people. Um, it was also just a very cool house. I think this is probably the second most gruesome murder. What in was my the opinion. most gruesome? To me, the most gruesome murder in this, uh, this season was when Kenix kicked that guy into the elevator shaft and then the elevator smashed him. When his, when his leg got oh, off commando. Oh, yeah. That was probably, to me, the most gruesome death. But okay. the house was a close second. Yeah. The house was, for me, like, Matt and I watched together, and I was just, like, sitting there, like, oh. Because we both felt like it was the most, it was the hardest to watch. Yeah. It That's wasn't true. maybe the most gruesome, but it was just, like, it was kind of harrowing because these people, while, you know, I wish they had maybe a little more sympathy for this kid, or at least the guy did, you know, the the wife definitely had sympathy. Right. Um, they weren't necessarily bad people. They were ordinary people who were lucky enough to live in a smart house, and then someone used that to kill them. That's terrifying. My parents have like a little thing on the wall. They just got a new apartment, and they decked it out with this thing. It's this tablet on the wall that they can adjust the lights, they can move the drapes automatically, which is not necessarily the same as sucking all the oxygen out of the room, but it terrifies. Me. But we're at, and that's the first step. We're moving there. Yeah. Smart houses are already being displayed. If you've been to Disneyland oh, at yeah. the Imagineering House, they totally it's have amazing that smart, smart house, house setup. Yeah. And like the security feature is just in a dangerous world, a natural evolution of that. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's also just so creepy. You've got this this hologram butler, soon to be an android butler. Um, I mean, what do you what do you guys think? I feel like I agree with Zach. We're moving towards a world where technology will be intricately linked to every single thing that we interact with to the point that if someone wanted to kill you all they have to do is enter your home through your computer um it is terrifying and it makes me fear all of those i robot and and terminator all of those movies just technology is gonna we're all gonna die is what <laughs> happened yeah terrifying uh, I fear an infection from a sex bot more than anything, I think. <laughs> you have to clean those? <laughs> that was, yeah, oh, that was so funny. I, but first, I have to say, of course, that's your biggest concern. <laughs> I mean, who's going to want to kill me other than you? I I don't know what you're up to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway. This side of the room, <laughs> I'm glad I'm on this side of the room. Okay. I'm on the fence. Great. We'll see how it goes. So, yeah, we, no, have um, we have this runner throughout the whole episode where Kenix is just being a huge dick and he's just telling everyone all these different reasons why Detective Paul is uh, is on leave for the day, is out for the day. He took a personal day and uh, he said, first he says it's a infected, infected, piercing, infected, infected, infected Prince Albert. Uh -huh. Then he says it's hemorrhoids. hemorrhoids inside and out. Yeah, inside donut. and <laughs> out. Ugh. Um, all those poor guys, they chipped in all those Bitcoins. All for, the beat cops. Yeah, yeah, all the beat cops chipped in Bitcoins for his hemorrhoid donut. And then... How uh, much do they think a hemorrhoid donut could possibly cost? It's the future. Who knows, man? Maybe it's not just like the way our donuts are now where it's just inflated. Yeah. Probably like massages and... Or vibrates. it's like made of like a silicon substance. I mean, here's the thing, right? He told he tells them that he's got hemorrhoids inside and out. Maybe it's a ring that also protects the inside. It's a ring with. We're an getting attachment. down a track that yeah. I do not want to continue. A digestive track. <laughs> um, well played, sir. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and then the third one is just so effing great. It's one of the reasons why I love this show. Is the humor is so cutting and you don't expect it. And Officer Blake, he tells her, you know, he got an infection from a sex spot, and the look on her face. She's just kind of like, first, she's excited to learn that someone else uses sex bots. This is, see, this is great acting. She's excited to learn that someone, she's not the only person on the force who's using sex bots. That makes her feel good about herself. <laughs> then he says that he got an infection and that you have to clean them. And she realizes, I haven't cleaned my sex bot in a while. <laughs> oh my God. This was a new revelation that you could have like your own personal oh, home course. version of the sex bots. I mean, I guess I, I just, I never thought about it. If you have enough money, like here's the thing. 
Some people they have their uh, they have their priorities in the right places. Her priority may in, in the in right, right place. place in yeah. the right place. Thank Instead you. of getting a bigger <laughs> apartment, get one big enough for the sex bot that she spent a year and a half salary on. You know, it's her closest companion. What? That's funny. In the future, there will be no cat ladies. There will be sex bot ladies. I want to live in the future. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a. <laughs> There's g- five of those in your apartment. It's a <laughs> jump in place. Oh yeah. No, it's it's just like the hacker party of except all real. Dorians, yeah. you know? It's the hacker party <laughs> except real. It's a massive rave where everyone is doing everything via technology. Brown chicken tick. And there's no fur everywhere. Yeah. Wait. Oh yeah. The cats. 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 I'm I'm glad we circled back to the cats. <laughs> yeah. Great. Let's circle back to the house now. Yeah, let's circle back <laughs> to the, the house. Scary technology. That it was doing. uh yeah, it was built by uh, Centurion Systems. So corporation. Corporation. Do you think the pool? cover was made of different material than the wall windowing because he busted through the window after he sees the pool shut Mm -hmm. and when he gets shot my first thought is oh cool the bullets are going to go through and break holes into the pool so she can breathe no why Uh, did you think that i mean he was already dead and i was like well maybe she's still gonna live i mean they're laser guided but i mean it would have went through him at the angle that the gun was pointing it would have gone into the pool not with enough force not with enough force especially if it hit if it hit bone if it hit ribs it could have gotten lodged in the uh, in the body i mean that looked like a pretty hefty gun though well at the very least it would decrease the velocity of the bullet to the point that it might not puncture high density plastic Nice. I mean, after he hit it three times with a fire hydrant, I am, what is, well, I am what is a little, velocity? I'm a little bit con- a little confused. I, I mean, I'm just willing to like let it, let it slide. It was strong stuff. Right. But like the pool covering being like that difficult to break, maybe not necessary. Right. As like a general thing that is a danger to people. Like today, you're you got to be real careful with pool right. covers because of little kids. Uh, well, and I all assume that. that the the reason is in the future you can cover your pool so that you can it's use like it a dance like floor. a deck. Yeah, you yeah. can be on top of it and Ooh, put I people had, on it. I had not thought of that. Oh really? That is a really good if idea. I had, yeah. But if I had a pool, I'd want it open. Like I wouldn't want to walk yeah, on it. In the winter, for example, if you're they were in Southern California, that we don't have winter. They were not in Southern California. Sometimes you just have a lot they of people over, yeah. and you need extra space. If you're having an engagement party. Okay, we're getting off topic. Okay, can we talk about Centurion? Uh, yes. Like, please. The so, security firm with the worst security ever. Ever. Yeah. That an 18 year old girl was able to hack into it and get inside, and no one's there except for the CEO of the company, <laughs> first of all. And two androids. And two androids, both lethal. And a lawyer. Yeah, and a lawyer. Well, no, the lawyer killed in his own home. Yeah. Uh, a day before, Peter um, Newsom. Peter Newsom. But he was there. So, did we ever discover or find out was he killed accidentally? Because we found out that he was jumping over the wall, but they never clearly oh, stated. Oh, the, the yeah, boy. Was Aaron killed? Was it an accidental death? Yes. Yes. He's... Yeah, that was very clear. Okay. It yeah. was like how we saw the I'm security in. system at the beginning. It saw hit, it. It was tricked into thinking there was a problem, but he, it saw the uh, the husband. And it saw him with what it determined to be a weapon, a lethal weapon. So I imagine the kid was holding something. He was probably holding his tablet, his hacking tablet. The story was that he was coming over the fence. Correct. So whether he had a weapon or not, he had... He was still trespassing. He was trespassing. trespassing. And, well, I assume it's not just going to see trespassing and then just take them out with a bullet. That's what I mean. Was there something ever established as to the reason that he was deemed a target and shot. He was trespassing. He was trespassing. That's the only reason. And and reason and like we saw it, the system determine like a uh, weapon is what I'm saying. And so I imagine that it went through the same process. But that one was hacked though too. So I mean maybe it has a later process for normal situations because that system was was dirty when it was killing the people that lived there. The Bennett's yeah, when when, it, when they were killing the Bennett's when they drowned him in the pool and then when they shot him, that system had been hacked by Emily. And but she deemed it a target. I don't think anybody got hacked. I think it was just an overshow of force. Like, much the way that the, the Zimmerman parallel, like, this is a guy who's on a night watch. He is guarding this place. Yeah. And he just used an excess, a far excessive amount of force to stop it. And he saw what he thought was a gun. The computer saw what it thought was a gun of some kind a and weapon. said, this, is, this person is dangerous. Yeah. We need to take them out. And so with its laser-guided bullets, it just, like, takes him out, and he's dead. Well, and that's the danger of this kind of technology because a human, yeah. or at least generally, should be able to determine this is a kid jumping over a fence. Right. He's not a dangerous person. And at the very least has the reasoning and the empathy 
to try to to want to determine who it is and not just make a snap judgment. It's the same argument, you know, or against taking. like say the death pe- penalty, where you know if there are people, if there have been any people who uh, were innocent, who were falsely proven guilty, who then go to the electric chair, we failed. And that's kind of what's going on with this house: is it is judge, jury, and ex- executioner. You are trespass. You are trespassing. I don't have to give you a warning. You're on this property. Blam. You're dead. It's what's really interesting is that they have this technology. They have this smart house, and it doesn't give warnings. Or distinguish that it needs to be, you know, a shot in the leg. I mean, that had to be a kill shot. Mm-hmm. So. That's the thing. You know, whatever happened to the good old days that is yelling at somebody to get out of your yard? Get out or I'm going to shoot you in the leg. I'm technology yeah. happened. We don't have to yell anymore. Or um, it's just it, it's just a malfunction of the technology where it should aim, because it's laser guided, it's computers right. doing it, it should just be able to take out the weapon or take out the leg right. from a person to stop Sweep them the as opposed kill. to killing them. But I imagine it seems like this company's fairly new. It mm-hmm. could have been a malfunction of the, te- of the technology. It's not the Bennett's fault, but people blame them. Right. Mm-hmm. I just want to ask, why was he climbing onto their property in the first place? Why didn't they meet in a public place? He was cutting through the yards to, to get to Emily's place. house. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I figured she lived nearby, but it's like, go around, dude. Yeah, yeah. just walk on the street. What, are people going to... rebel? Gonna, yeah. People or I guess to avoid you? getting seen by her parents, maybe. He wants to, like, room. throw the ladder up. Clarissa explains it all style. Yeah, he's doing it <laughs> Sam style. I like that. Um, okay, so we kind of get into this hacker world once we discover that it's, uh, that it, these systems have been hacked. We get into Rudy's past a little bit as a hacker. Um, and also we get a lot of jokes at Rudy's expense about him sleeping with prostitutes. Um, a lot. Multiple times. I don't complain when you bring uh, suspiciously dressed women around. Yeah, exactly. Or uh, later on when uh, when he they're talking about Crispin X and he's like, oh yeah, Kristen X. She. Uh, I didn't know I owed her money. I didn't have to pay her. Yeah. No, and it's like no, 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 no. Crispin X. Oh, Crispin X. Right. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. And he, back in the day, Aphid. He was rocking the name Aphid, and he was hacking up a, ho- a whole storm. And he get invited to these super cool parties that he never ever went to, um, because oh, he was we, afraid. Now that we've seen the parties, I'm like, yeah, they're probably. so cool. These parties, right? <laughs> they're super cool. Um, there was all kinds of cool stuff in this episode. Did you see the neon koi fish? <laughs> uh, yeah, I I loved the holographic fish. I loved the holographic fish, and uh, I just that's the part of the future that I do want. <laughs> holographic fish. <laughs> yeah. Smart houses, not so much. Holographic fish. Yes. <laughs> Better use of our time. I would love a smart house. I want to go on record saying I will have a smart house one day. No bullets. No bullets. I think that's a, a line that I can Maybe easily lasers. come to. I will never come by your house. Why? There are no bullets. Well, I, it's still terrifying. But there's no, there's no bullets. There's no bullets. There's no decompression Sam, chamber houses. Sam will hurt me. I can feel it. It's all right. So Same this party, yeah. it's okay. just so I can yell to my house, much the way you can yell to like an Xbox One, like yeah. TV on, turn yeah. the lights off, I'm going to bed, and it just does it. Roast a chicken. <laughs> yes. Damn it, house, I said collard greens, not mustard greens. House, pour me an ale. Yes, house, <laughs> pour me an ale, bring the partridge. No, hear you, dumb house. <laughs> Listen to the here. sound of my voice. Yeah. Did anybody else when they first show the the ro- like the, well eventually it's a robot butler but I just had flashes of sleeper, and I just wanted to see Woody Allen like come in like really awkward in his mm-hmm. <laughs> robot costume. That would have been cool. I don't think that they would do that on this show. No, but I would like that. Uh, yeah. Back to the hacker party. Back to the hacker party. We get this super cool rave, and we've got Kenix and Stall decked out in and rave her, gear. Her that, uh, pink wig, purple yeah. wig, whatever. The undercover look for them. Yeah. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. Dude, nice jacket. (laughs) I know. And he's like, I'm going to kill him. And Uh, he gets to use his natural accent. Which was awesome. Was that his actual voice? Well, no, I felt like he was doing a British accent and he's Australian. Australian. It was an Australian accent. He kept calling everyone mate. It sounded British to me. He kept calling everyone mate. But it sounded like he was, like, forcing it. Yeah. It did sound forced. He probably did an intentionally bad accent. Right, because that's what Ken X would be doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Minka Kelly totally looked like, uh, like Natalie Portman Fifth, and Closer. Right? Fifth Element, too. Or the Fifth Element, yeah. sure. Or Space Channel 5, if you want to go back to the Dreamcast days. 
Um, nice we pump. don't. <laughs> Fine. Uh, yeah, no, it was a lot of fun, and I love the idea that it's just a virtual party, and there's only seven people there, and it's like build is this big thing. Uh, and then I also loved Dorian's um, scene where he's trying to get the the girl to not kill herself, and he chooses to stay with her instead of trying to save Kenix from uh, suffocating. Mm -hmm. um, also, great use of the holographic uh, technology, with uh, which uh, has been like done it. before on this show. Yeah. yeah, but not to make multiple Kenixes shooting guns, which is cool. Awesome. I liked it. Yeah. There's so many times watching this show, and I hate myself for this, where like I look at I look at Carl Urban playing John Kennex, I'm like, God, he's just so cool. He's just so cool. Oh, look at him shooting. Look at him shooting. Oh, he's so cool. He's so cool. Yeah, is that's that, it. Is Kick that what you, Matt, yeah. is that what your inner monologue sounds like? <laughs> yeah. Hey, get a sandwich. Oh, I'd like a <laughs> Pour sandwich. Pour me an alehouse. Have you had any water yet today? Oh, yeah, get some water. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what that voice is, but it's it is. It's Adam Sandler. It is mine. No, is that it? was very Adam Sandler. Is it? That was very. Did Adam I Sandler. like? Did I like subconsciously absorb a bunch of Sandler when I was like eight years old? I guess. I think so. so. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah. Okay. The penguin. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Uh, I think it's time for us to talk predictions. Unless anyone has anything. I, think I, I, I had predictions. And now, All right, great. You're after Buzz TV. Predictions. Okay. So what do we got on tap? We got two episodes left of the series of the season. Uh, hopefully not the series. Yeah. Um, we don't see any John Larroquette for next week. But what do we think is happening? What's going on with these memories? What do you got? Uh, I stand by my statement that it's little children's souls. Okay, little children's souls. Uh, Ryan. I got nothing for next week. Nothing I, for next week. I mean, week? flaw. The whole thing on the tag when the uh, the episode uh, they showed the preview was all talking about humans equal flaws and that kind of thing. So I think we're gonna see some flaws in the human psyche, hmm. in the cops even. Maybe Kenix is gonna have a moment where he's gonna make a wrong choice. Maybe maybe all all the detectives or maybe just Kenix have to have psych evals and it opens up some issues. Or maybe Dorian gets a psych eval, which would be a very interesting. Thing to watch. Well, I liked that part in this episode where th he told him that they used to have conversations. Yeah, it was and he was like, "I used to wake you up, and I used to have these awesome conversations with you, but I erased all the files." Yeah, and he's, he's like, like can, "Can I have him back? Can I have him back?" So you know, he wants his memories. Yeah, which is more that. like instant uh, Rudy connection, like Dorian Rudy friendship. Yeah, I like because he's like, "We're back. friends. You can tell me these things." Yeah, that was a cool little moment at the end. Yeah, but. Zach, any yeah. predictions? Um, well, I, I similarly, I'm going to stand by what I said earlier. And I think that the, the memories are going to be, because they were hacked in. Mm -hmm. They were established that they were hacked in, which sort of disproved a little bit that it was like something that was just like staying down there, something old file that he found. Like somebody put it in there. It was what Rudy said, at least. Um, so you're I saying I'm wrong. Uh, Basically. Well, yeah. Um, but I think, Pretty much. I think Dr. Vaughn, um, I looked in my notes and found his name. I think Dr. Vaughn is the one that is behind it one way or another. He knows something about how to trigger a response from Dorian. Mm. Mm. And something about that memory is so, going to put Dorian into a place where he's going to turn to the to, a, to a controlled or a bad side. And I mean, now we know that androids can be hacked. Side. And that is just dangerous. That is huge and dangerous that androids cannot be trusted. So John Larroquette for episode 13. JLQ. Yeah, we got hope. We got hope anyway. All right, we got to wrap up. Uh, I want to thank everybody for downloading, watching, streaming, well, doing you, what you do. Guys. You're the best in the world. Let's save this show. Tweet, call, email, snail mail, send via. Send a sex bot to Fox. <laughs> yeah, Snapchat Fox. You should Snapchat Fox and send them I, pictures of Dorian. I imagine Dorian. hashtag save almost human. Hashtag save almost human, I imagine, is already a thing. So go ahead well, and let's do it. If it's not, we're, st let's we're get starting. It, going. it is now. Great. Yeah. Okay. Yell Teagle, where can the people find you? The people can find me online at yell.tv. That's Y-A-E-L dot TV. And uh, on Twitter and Instagram at Yell Teagle, Y-A-E-L-T-Y-G-I-E-L. -E you can find me at RyanHooks92 on the Twitter, on the Instagram, on the Snapchat, on the Yahoo. See you there. Who contacts you on the Yahoo? People do. Okay. Don't worry about it. All right. Zach. Sure. Uh, I'm Zach Wilson. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at that Zach Wilson. That's T H A T Z A C H W I L S O N. And also here at AfterBuzz on Grim Archer and Helix. Great. All right. And uh, 
I mean, if you want to follow me, and I imagine that you do, because, I mean, come on. I mean, I do. Yeah, Ryan does, and he has a very fulfilling life. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah, he leads a very fulfilling life. You can find me on Twitter, at Matt Lieberman, M-A-T-T-L-I-E-B-E-R-M-A-N. And if you're feeling salacious, you can follow me on the Instagram and see boring pictures of food and selfies uh, at Matty Lieberman, M-A-T-T-Y <laughs> Lieberman, as spelled earlier. After Buzz TV, everywhere, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., here on Almost Human, Cougar Town, Justified, Sherlock, Lost Girl, Helix, Banshee. Going to be more in the spring. It's going to be great. And if you love live comedy and you live in Los Angeles, guess what? I'm going to be performing a bunch of it, and you should come see it at the I.O. West Comedy Theater on Hollywood Boulevard. That's 6366 Hollywood Boulevard. I'm performing Thursday night. Uh, I believe that that is, what, the 21st? Er, no, it's the 20th. Thursday night, the 20th, as a member of DJ Fawcett at 11 p.m. Thursday night. Got another show Saturday night at 11. And then uh, March 9th, Sunday, March 9th at 9 p.m. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, peace out. Goodbye. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here. And be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.